And finally, on MH370, uh, there's an extra, is it 79 million in this budget? Uh, there's an appropriation of 79 million, yes, Senator. So, uh, through my work on another inquiry. I'm sorry, Senator. Yep. So, so, through my work on another inquiry, uh, it was put to uh, that committee that um, uh, an unmanned platform or a UAV could have, in, could have been in place where you were searching within 12 hours and sustained indefinitely through changing over with Christmas Island. And the obvious efficiencies in unmanned platforms, no pilot, you know, you can virtually sustain them 24 hours a day uh, with no fatigue factors and they're very quick and efficient and more efficient than searching aircraft with people on it. Mm. Is that in the, your thinking at all? Uh, no, Senator. Uh, so uh, just to explain that, the initial stages of the search for MH370, the looking for debris on the surface in the hope that there might still be survivors, was a matter of search and rescue, which is with the Australian Maritime Safety Authority. The questions of what techniques might be available in future for extensive search and rescue operations is one really for AMSA. For our purposes, which is the subsurface search, trying to define an area where the aircraft may be and to search for it is a highly specialised technique using towed sonar and other equipment. And we but have- But they're all um, unmanned vehicles, aren't they? Uh, Yes. So I'm just, um, I'm just curious why we didn't have one above the ground as well as one below the sea. Uh, and that's not a matter. I wasn't uh, responsible for the surface search, Senator, so it's not a matter I can comment on. OK. So the search continues and yes. are we any closer to...? Well, every day we cover more area as a day. We should be closer to finding the aircraft, Senator. Right. Thank you. just ask the Chinese. They probably know. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we're, we're confident, Senator, that if, as we think we have, we've defined the search area um, well, uh, that we have the techniques and the capability to find the aircraft. So we have confidence, but not certainty, we will find it. Are you surprised that we've got any luggage, plastic bags floating? No sign. I mean, you think of an aircraft went down anywhere in the ocean. There'd be some sort of luggage or something floating, some evidence, and yet the, there hasn't been any of that even seen, has there? Uh, there's probably three points to be made there, Senator. Uh, <coughs> the first is that historically, if you look at the range of <coughs> collisions of passenger aircraft with water, there's a range of possibilities, some of which have very little floating debris at all, some of which have extensive floating debris, such as Air France 447 in the South Atlantic. Um, so we don't know how hard and at what angle the aircraft hit the water, so we don't know how much floating debris there would have been. The second is we didn't start looking for floating debris until about day 10, when a lot of it would already have been dispersed, and so it was a difficult task. Uh, and the third is that all the projections we can do say that any debris that there may be would most likely have been progressively floating further out into the Indian Ocean, ending up in that one of those large gyres that collects a whole range of rubbish in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So it's a mystery, isn't it? It is. Okay. Sorry, some wounds. Is there 